Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Alright, pack one, pick one, or rare Elvish Reclaimer. I guess it plays at its best in the black green deck with Vulture milling over lands randomly and can make it so your top decks become better once you start taking lands out of your deck. It's not insane, but like if I get it late in the pack, I'll consider taking it and playing it. As a first pick, it's not great though. What else do we have? I've got some okay commons here between Thief, Boreal Elemental, Shock. I'm a big fan of the Smuggler too in the right deck. And in white, we have Fencing Ace, which is a bit of a build around too. I'm leaning between Shock, Thief and Boreal, and they're all pretty close. But the efficiency of Shock is difficult to beat. And there's even a chance we wield the Smuggler. Bots love wielding the Smuggler somehow, so that's something to look forward to if we take the Shock here. I think I'll take Shock over the Boreal. Alright, followed it up with Murder or Gravedigger. Probably leaning Murder. It's just a very efficient, powerful removal spell. But Gravedigger is kind of a built-in 2 for 1, is also excellent. Another Boreal Elemental would be nice. Angel is good too. Even a Cloud can see her. Cloudkin definitely competes with Murder as one of the best commons. I would take Cloudkin over Boreal. Even in a metagame full of bows, killing one toughness creatures, I think Cloudkin gets a nod. I am a fan of blue-red, like aggressive blue-red decks. If they come together, can be exceptional. Black-red is fine too, nothing against it. Murder is a fine card, starting with two removal spells can basically lead to anything. And we don't have to be black-red, we could still easily pivot if red or black ends up being cut off. I think I still take the murder, but it's close. Alright, third pick. Seeing some good black and blue cards. The red cards, Kelden Raider, not too exciting. Vampire of Dire Moon is quite good. It is one toughness, so it does die to opposing bows, but otherwise it's just a nice blocker that we can easily get back with a soul salvage and replay for one mana. Skeleton is also great and plays well in some of the more synergistic decks that uh, play around with the graveyards or just want some expendable creatures. And Cutthroat also plays well alongside Skeleton, uh, alongside uh, Bow, alongside just cheap creatures that the opponent must block, like Audacious Thief. But for now I think I'm still leaning Vampire, hoping to wheel or get some of these cards later and uh, see where we end up. So still seeing some good uh, red and black cards, Reduce, Lavakin, Not a Skeleton, the best cards in the pack here. I do think Brawler is probably better than Skeleton if it has enough support, just as a very powerful 4-drop that deals a ton of damage. If we get to Smugglers later, then those synergize with Brawler as well. Reduce is a fine removal spell, but we already have a Shock, a Murder and a Vampire with Death Touch. So I think I want to start picking up some beefier creatures that can actually do some damage. The argument for Skeleton over Brawler is that we have two black cards and only one red card, so we're more likely to end up in black than in red, but it's still very early. I think I'm still going with a Brawler, can probably pick up Skeletons later. I'll happily take another Brawler, they do get better multiples. Another Reduce Ashes, still a card I would happily take, but there is a limit to how many 5 mana removal spells you want in your deck, even though it is still pretty effective. Soul Salvage also still in the pack, card I would be happy with. God's Willing gets probably the nomination for best card in the pack, but I don't see a reason to take the white card here given that there's good red and black options available. I think I still take another Brawler. Alright, this pack is a bit weaker. We did see a God's Willing in the previous pack, could be a sign that white is open, seeing an Ancestral Blade now. So maybe we should switch into white and end up in an aggressive red-white deck, which I'm not a fan of, but if it's open, then we might get rewarded. Since we're playing best of one, Noxious Grasp is not really a thing. We could end up with a few Kelvin Raiders to discard Noxious Grasps in matchups where it's not good. So it's still potentially a card worth considering if we have some ways of discarding cards from our hand. Uh, but overall, I don't recommend playing it as a, a main deck card in best of one. Um, yeah, I think I'll take the blade. It's probably worth it speculating on white in case uh, black or red doesn't pan out. It's a pretty late renowned weaponsmith, although don't really have the support for taking weaponsmith here. Uh, skeleton would be good, pack massive is a fine 2-drop that's still relevant in the late game thanks to the mana sync. 
So I think I'm leaning Mastiff just to have a good 2-drop over Skeleton, since we currently don't have a ton of synergy with the Skeleton yet. It is a fine card, even without too many synergies. But we're looking somewhat aggressive with uh, the two Brawlers, kind of the removal to back up the early pressure. So I think I'd rather take Mastiff for now. And we're probably wheeling one of the Skeletons anyway. Alright, could take Skeleton now. Rats and Black still seem relatively open. Although Uncaged Fury can also be quite powerful if our deck is low to the ground, opponents forced into blocking our creature, and we get a blowout with Uncaged Fury or just use it as a finisher. Probably can hope to wheel one of the Skeletons and get it later anyway. Oh wow, ninth pick, both Smuggler and Thief, both cards we're very interested in. This is a toughie. We do have Double Brawler, which plays great alongside Smuggler, and we're more likely to be red than black. So that's an argument for the Smuggler. Now Thief draws cards. Drawing cards is great. We've got removal and pump spells to back up our Thief, so it can draw multiple cards. But given that we have so many red cards, and red seems a little bit more open than black so far, I think I'm leaning Smuggler. Alright, I'll happily take a Blade Brand now. Uh, Sorcerer, not at its best in this style of deck, would be a good finisher in a more defensive mid rangey deck where we can stall out the ground and use Sorcerer to close out the game. This deck probably wants more aggressive 2 drops and back those up with Smugglers and Removal spells instead of using Sorcerer as a finisher. That being said, there's still a chance I'll end up with a Sorcerer in my deck and I'll play it, but for now Blade Brand seems better as it fits with our game plan of playing early threats and backing those up with removal and pump spells. Gutthroat fits into that plan perfectly as well, probably not playing Abomination, but you never know. And not much here, I'll take the Chaplain since we have this Ancestral Blade, in case we somehow move into white, although that seems unlikely at this point. Alright, so first pack went okay. Let's try and keep it up. And this could be a third Lavakin Brawler. They do get better multiples, so I don't mind taking it. Siphon would also be a consideration, but probably still take the Brawler over it. Other good cards in the pack include God's Willing, Silverback Shaman. Don't really see a reason to deviate from the Lavakin Brawler plan. Alright, Master Splicer, good white card, so... Definitely passed a good chunk of powerful uncommon white cards between the two gods willings, the Master Splicer now too. But uh, black seemed relatively open as well with the late Cutthroat, the Vampire, the Smuggler, or the, the Thief rather, alongside the Smuggler. We did not wheel any of the Skeletons in the first pack. Possible that we should be a red-white instead of red-black and just take the Splicer anyway. I could take the Reduced Ashes, Strengthen or Red as an okay removal spell to have at 5. Bone Splinters would have been better if we had already taken some of the Skeletons, so far it's not too exciting in our deck. And Marauder Sacks can also be a nice equipment to have to make our smaller creatures more relevant later. Probably leaning Reduce for now, stick to Red and kind of see where we end up. Well, Chandra is one of the best uncommons in the set, so happily taking that. Great synergy with our three Lavakin Brawlers as well, so that's an easy pickup. Hey, uh, I'm Chandra. Nice to meet you. And I'm loving this Amber Cat on turn two, ramping into turn three Lavakin Brawlers. And Spitter would also make the cuts, given all the elemental synergies we have. Infuriate would also be fine. Uh, Siphon is also decent, but I think Amber Cat is too good here. We need more two drops to play early. And Ambercat both fills that role, as well as having great synergy with the Brawlers. Alright, probably still taking the Outrage over the second Ambercat, even though a second Ambercat would still be great. For all the reasons I mentioned, we do have a lot of fours already between Cutthroats, Brawlers and Chandra. So this is one of those decisions where the Ambercat might actually still be better than the Outrage. Outrage is definitely a better card than Ambercat in a vacuum, but looking at our curve, or deck might need the Ambercat more than it needs an Outrage. I think I still Outrage. Berserker has a bit of synergy with the Smuggler. I need more 2-drops, and this will do. And Necromancer, not the most exciting card in this deck, but it's definitely a fine card to have at 5 if we needed a 5. Uh, Digger, also more of a filler card. 
So I think I'll take the Berserker mostly for curve, hoping to pick up more smugglers to synergize with it. Wow. Scampering Scorcher with both Chandra Nova Spiromancer and Triple Brawler is gonna be the pick. Although, yeah, now we're looking at a ton of four drops. So our curve doesn't look great, but uh, we can pass up on future four drops, I guess. Or just hope to get more Amber Cats so we can play the four drops on turn three already. More four drops, probably not gonna play either one of them, but I'll take another Cutthroat just in case. I guess there's a small chance we end up mono red, in which case I want to take the red card. I'll take the Aeronaut in case we end up in mono red somehow. Not much here that I want. I doubt I'll main deck an airstrike. A wand doesn't do a whole lot for me. Stone Golem's a 5. Can probably end up with a better 5. And we've got a ton of 4s already, so... I'll take an uncommon here for the vault mostly. Alright, wield axe and sorcerer. Sorcerer not the best fit for our deck once again, but... Don't know if we need an axe. We're a bit light on the early creatures, where axe would shine. Like a brawler doesn't really need an axe to make a good attack. It is okay with uh, Scampering Scorcher, giving the 1-1s one an equipment. And axe is still okay with the smuggler. We can like make something unblockable and then move the axe onto it. It gets a little awkward on the following turn, because then we need to like move the axe and re-equip it. But I still don't mind axe alongside smuggler. I guess I'll still take the axe. It's also okay with Uncaged Fury if we can Fury the creature that has an axe onto it. Can add up to a lot of damage. Alright, we wield the Spitter. I think I prefer that over Infuriate. Just have more cheap elementals for the Lavakin Brawler. Maniacal Rage may or may not make the cuts. So sadly didn't wield Amber Cat. Didn't really expect to necessarily, but... Hopefully we can shore up the early game in the last pack. The only cheap card that would fit into our deck here is Scorch Spitter. Act of Treason if our deck is hyper-aggressive could also be consideration. But Rapacious Dragon isn't bad, just as an evasive 5-drop uh, we don't have much at 5. How about another one? Well, there's still nothing else I want in this pack. Definitely some powerful cards, but not for uh, us sadly. So yeah, I'll double dragon here. Alright, Smuggler and Shock, both excellent. Which one do we prefer? With all these Brawlers, Smuggler is quite excellent. We're probably going to wheel the Spitter out of the first pack. So it works well with those as well. And in terms of removal, we've got Shock, we've got Outrage, we've got Murder. Um, so we're doing okay in terms of removal, reduced to Ashes. I think I prefer the Smuggler just to have more creatures, but Shock is excellent too. Alright, another reason to want uh, Smuggler, of course, is the Berserker at 2 as well. I think I'll take another Berserker over the Scorch Spitter, since we're likely getting Scorch Spitter anyway. Don't have many flying creatures for the Bird Grabber, it's just the two Rapacious Dragons so far. And this isn't really a Bone Splinters deck, so I'll take Berserker. Uh, I don't think we want Bow without a ton of Cutthroats, given that the 4 drops are kind of taken by the Lavakin Brawlers already. A single random bow in the main deck is still potentially fine, but not exciting. Don't need to take another Cutthroat. Got infinite fours already. Uh, Gravedigger, another four drop. It is a, f a powerful four drop in that it's kind of a built-in two for one. But I don't know if we need to slow down our deck even more. The curve is kind of high already. So given all that, I think I'm leaning Blood Burglar here. Take another cheap card. Put the opponent kind of on the defensive as early as possible. So we can leverage some uh, of our tricks like Blade Brand even more. Alright, well, Amber Cat is perfect. Needed more 2-drops, needed more Elementals, needed more Ramp for Brawler, so that's an easy pickup. And I'll happily take another Spitter, although another Massive is fine too. Alright, so let's start building our deck. So these are kind of the interactive spells. Maniacal Rage is still a maybe. Probably not playing Abomination. Probably not playing the Aeronaut at this point. Like, we could still be Monorad for all we know. Because, like, the only black cards are Burglar, Vampire, Bladebrand, and Murder. 
and fitting murder into our mana base not the easiest necessarily. So either way, we're taking a red card here, Mastiff or Spitter. Probably gonna wheel Spitter out of the ninth pick. And if I'm not playing Burglar, then having another pack Mastiff would be nice. I think I'll take it here. Well, not gonna say no to another Lavakin Brawler. The more the merrier. Soul Salvage could be a consideration, giving us kind of a, a grindy late game if we end up in black. But Mono Red might honestly be better here. Alright, pretty happy with the Spitter now. Act of Treason would also be a consideration if we're going Mono Red. Might play the Tectonic Rifts. Alright, another Spitter is nice. And another Maniacal Rage. I think I prefer that over the Bow. Just go double Rage with all these turn 1 Spitters. Alright, make that four spitters. Yeah, I think we can make uh, Mono Red work pretty easily here now. Just don't need to be concerned with a second color. We've got 44 cards, need to make a couple of cuts. Uh, don't know if we need four spitters, can also easily cut a lance. And definitely starting there since our curve is relatively low, especially with double Amber Cat ramping into the Brawlers, can sometimes play them on three. Our interaction takes the form of Shock, Outrage, Reduce. Chandra is also excellent. Got an Axe and Double Maniacal Rage, and then Uncage Fury as a pump spell as well. Smuggler as kind of a late game threat to make our stuff unblockable, and Dragons to fly over. Could see shaving one Spitter. It's probably acceptable. Although Spitter into Maniacal Rage is a nice one-two punch, so maybe we just want to maximize that potential and just keep all the Spitters and all the Rages. I could shave a dragon just to lower the curve even more. Although it is nice to have more evasive threats to close out the game. Although we're also not really using the extra mana from dragons, so it's just a 5 mana 3-3 three, three flyer, which is fine, but not exactly the most efficient rate. Could shave the reduce to ashes, but it might be better for the deck to have the cheap creatures followed by reduce to ashes to kill the opponent's big blockers instead of having the dragon as the last threat standing. Since a lot of the big creatures in the set, if you think Mammoth Spider in green, Boreal Elemental in blue, they all block the Rapacious Dragon pretty well. So in those situations I would rather have a Reduce to Ashes than a Rapacious Dragon. So let's shave a dragon. Do I want the last dragon or do I quit both of them? Could even go as low as 15 lands since we just need 4 mana basically. So what if I just cut Dragon and a land, play 15 lands, stop my curve at 4 with 1 Reduce to Ashes, and then Brawlers I can play on 3 sometimes, so our curve is even lower. Just be very low to the ground here with a nice selection of 2-drops. Smuggler, hopefully Brawler on 3 sometimes. And then uh, I've got kind of Scorcher, Chandra to go over the top, Smuggler to make unblockable, and Axe and... Maniacal Rage to push through damage. I think this looks fine. Maniacal Rage also doubles up as removal for the opponents. Blocker if they only have one creature out. Alright, well, we've got to turn one Spitter. No two mana play, sadly, but... I've got a few to draw towards between the two Maniacal Rages, the six creatures. So that's like eight two drops that we can find. And then a third line gives us Smuggler times two, so while not perfect, it's probably still a keep. Alright, at least we've got land three lined up. Ancestral Blades, that's a good one. So we'll just smuggle or make them blockable. Bones attacking. And a Griffin Sentinel. 
All right, so now what? The second smuggler doesn't do a whole lot. If I place smuggler here, I guess if Sentinel's the only blocker, then Reduce can open up an extra attacker. I think I'll just do this for now. I could have still attacked with a Hasty Smuggler, there's a chance they don't block it if they fear, like, a shock. Might want to smuggle on defense if they do something with the equipment. Uh, I'll take three. So now the reduced ashes could line up well. All their opponent does have three mana up. But I guess I would rather reduce than get blown out mid combat if I try something with the Uncaged Fury. Although that being said, we drew Berserker, so I could Berserker plus Fury, which is mana efficient and sets up an unblockable creature for next turn. So maybe the play is just make Spitter unblockable attack, play Berserker, and say go, and then Berserker plus Fury could do a ton of damage. I think I like that, so... Start here. Can't pay for Convolute anyway, so might as well hide the info. Say go. Raise the alarm. Berserker is also just unblockable by itself if they only have white creatures in play. Worth pointing out. Alright, just a Sentinel attacking, that's good. Dawning Angel, sure. Points at 16. Are they anywhere close to dead? Berserker can attack for 8 by itself with the Uncaged Fury. So not quite lethal, but we're getting close. So this is probably a good opportunity for Reduce to Ashes. Berserker can attack by itself. I can keep a Smuggler on defense. So the question here is, what do I reduce? The Dawning Angel or the Griffin Sentinel? Gotta watch out for, like, an Anthem effect as well next turn, pumping their entire team, so probably just kill the Dawning Angel still. Sentinel on defense doesn't matter a whole lot since we've got double Smuggler going and a protection from white creature. Opponent's down to 11. Could potentially kill them next turn. Since I could make Smuggler unblockable. Fury the Berserker, and then Spitter gets in the last points. So I think they're dead, let's just double check. So Berserker is 8 by itself, 2 from Smuggler, 1 from Spitter. So just gotta be careful here with how I activate my Smugglers. This is unblockable. Attack. And Fury Berserker for Xaxes. So the protection from white coming up here. Don't often play against white decks since white perceived to be one of the weaker colors in draft, but uh, yeah, when you play against only white creatures, having the protection from white Berserker is pretty useful. Alright, so we're on the play. Only one land. Well, this hand would be keepable with two lands since we've got Ambercat as well, but with a one lander I don't think we can risk this. This is better. I've got the Spitter into Maniacal Rage start. Probably just bottom to reduce and keep Brawler plus Scorcher as a good synergy. Hoping to draw lands or Ambercats. Uh, 
up against the blue red. At least we're out of shock range, but on summon could still get us. Alright, got a Grixis pile. Scorcher out of a Grixis mana base, not what you expect, but uh, I'll take it. Alright. Well, if we draw lands, Brawler into Scorcher could do a ton of damage. What is this? Get the four color mana base. Don't associate Spitter with four color decks. Just a master for now. So opponent can double block Spitter if uh, we attack with it. We could attack with both Spitters and then they can eat the 1 1 Spitter with a Thief, but then the other one goes unblocked, which could be fine in the spots. Yeah. I'll just send a 3 3 here. We do have. A couple spells that maybe reward us for waiting, like the Shock and the Uncaged Fury, but opponent decides to play it safe here, not risking the double block, maybe wanting to preserve the Thief, but we're getting the opponent down to 10. If Thief attacks, do I block with the Mastiff? It would be reasonable not to, since their opponent's getting pretty low on life. Could just burn them out here with Scorcher and Spitter. So they're likely playing a reasonably sized creature this turn or removal spell. I think I just take it. Ouch. That was a worst case scenario. I didn't want to say it out loud because I was afraid of it. But yeah, Siphon killing our creature, gaining 3 it's kind of a disaster. Oh well, at least a massive gets to attack. Could have been reasonable too to just pump the Mastiff instead of playing Berserker. But at least Berserker means I'll need to keep back a blocker for it. Opponents gain 3 life already from their mana base. Chandra Spitfire. No attacks at least. And a Maniacal Rage. So if I Rage the Mastiff, it has a good attack. And then Berserker can attack. Not quite in a spot where we want to Maniacal Rage the opponent's creatures to prevent blocking. Alright, hopefully the Mastiff survives. Uh-oh. Gets reduced. Alright, if we can draw land here we can punish the attack. There we go, I think I'm scorching. Opponent's down to two, despite gaining six life this game. A rabbit bites. All right, we've got a game plan here. Play brawler, so the opponent's out of removal. Spitter, probably just play another Brawler, no attacks for now, and then next turn we can send them both. Ooh, wow, Uncaged Fury, quite a draw. Alright, play Spitter, attack with all, hope for the best. So if I Fury, I can save one of my creatures and kill the Ambercat. But let's say our opponent has, I don't know, Blade Brand, then I want to keep Fury to maybe save the Brawler. Right now our opponent would be left with two Ambercats, and we would be left with two Brawlers and a Spitter, and we could still set up kind of the same lethal attack next turn. So I think I'm waiting. And then try again next turn. Opponent explodes. Well, it works for me. All 
All right, sweet. So despite getting uh, two for one a few times with the Maniacal Rage, still got there. And I mean, that's one of the advantages of playing a low land count is that at the end of that game, we still only had four lands where our opponents had uh, a lot more in play. So drawing fewer lands and more spells is also a form of card advantage. So far, so good. All right, we're on the play. Reasonable hands, needs a couple lands for the Brawler. Um, but we do get to Curve Spitter into Axe with Shock as interaction. So it's good enough for an opening hand. But we'll need to develop. Oh no. Healer of the Glade, our only weakness. So I could Shock to get in for two, or I could play Axe and then next turn equip Axe and Shock. Seems better. Healer's a good one against us, though. No. Not a Weaponsmith. Alright, we're probably not winning this one. If Weaponsmith can find a bow, then all these one toughness creatures are probably not gonna stay around for long. I can shock the healer, equip spitter attack. I think our hope is that they just don't have a bow in their deck. And Leafkin Druids. Pwn can activate the Weaponsmith end of turn. Eh, at least we get to play a Brawler, which doesn't die to a single bow. The bolts passing Weaponsmith is definitely one of the issues with the uh, M20 draft on Arena. Getting Weaponsmith like 6-7 pick and getting the bows pretty late and wheeling them does mean you encounter the Weaponsmith plus bow deck more often than you should in paper. There's the bow. Equips Leafkin. Leafkin attacks and kills Spitter. Chandra. Well, Scorcher into Chandra is quite a wombo combo. Yeah, I guess we just Scorcher attack, and then opponent might have to jump with the Weaponsmith if they, they want to take a million. Chandra into Scorcher is also fine, but then I miss out on a big attack with the Brawler this turn. But that would have been fine too. Because if they take 8, I'm happy. Because then Chandra can also just burn them out. Bones down to 7. Sure, they can kill a 1 1 if they attack with a bow, but attacking with a mana creature is also pretty awkward. They could kill both 1 1s, but they're down to 7. Chandra represents maybe 4 damage. But yeah, playing Chandra up first would have been totally fine too, considering the opponent couldn't really pressure Chandra all that well. Alright, so equips a Leafkin, Leafkin. Kill some one toughness creatures. And the Vile. Alright, Vile plus double bow can kill Brawler. So I think I start by attacking, no need to equip the axe first. Because I don't want him to chum the Brawler here. And if I move the axe, then they're definitely chomping with a weaponsmith. Alright, they chomp anyway. Alright, gotta hope they don't have another bow, I guess. Yeah, I think I messed up by playing um, Scorcher before Chandra, given the double bow situation. 
Hopefully it doesn't cost us. Still have a lot of good top decks left between all the burn spells, the brawlers. Smuggler would win the game. Just a Leafkin killing the Berserker. And another Brawler. Alright, so before I drew Brawler, the play would have been probably Chandra, kill Risen Reef, attack for three. Now, what's the play? Might just be play Brawler pre combat, attack for four, opponent chumps. And we're in good shape. Yeah, I do want to have the two Brawlers in play, essentially. So that if they kill one, I still have another to attack with. Opponent takes it down to three. Alright, well, now a double Chandra activation could get there. And winged words to draw some cards. Not too much life gain you could have. Pulse of Marasa comes to mind. And Gift of Paradise. So despite having a hand with multiple one toughness creatures, facing the early weaponsmith, might still be able to get there. Yeah, Healer of the Glade would be annoying. If they had moved both bows to the Risen Reef, then they could have now attacked with Risen Reef and activated Vile to kill Brawler. Now they're gonna be a mana short unless they haven't played land yet. Alright, this should be pretty straightforward. I guess I might as well uh, kill the Risen Reef. For single green, they could have Might of the Masses, uh, which would give plus two plus two right now. So I don't want to outrage the three toughness creature. And Brawler attacks as a 4-4 four, four anyway. Opponent has to chump. The bows are not an issue if they don't have a creature that can attack, and Chandra's lethal by herself. Alright, so pretty good top decks here near the end. And Moo's gonna be too slow. Even without Chandra equipping the axe would be lethal here, so they need another blocker. Portal doesn't do it. We'll start by attacking. Since the brawler still gets pumped from its ability. And then if this somehow doesn't work, I can still play a Chandra second main to burn them out if they have a unsummon here. They did have any unsummon, alright. And Chandra for the win. All right. Sweet. Well, we've got a pretty nice opening hand here with turn one spitter, turn two maniacal rage potentially. Smuggler to make the other spitter unblockable. Turn two leafkin. Alright, against the uh, Leafkin, I think I like Maniacal Rage. Like, the Spitter still deals one damage, so playing another one isn't bad. Because the thing is, if I play Smuggler next turn, it's not really making anything unblockable, since we'll have a 3-3 Spitter in play. So maybe it is right to just play another Spitter for now and hold on to the Maniacal Rage. There's a chance they also don't block, fearing a shock. And this Chandra is going to be pretty sweet with two spitters in play. Opponent on... Well, kind of the perfect draw here. Turn two Leafkin, turn three Risen Reef with all three colors, so they kind of have the nuts. And the healer, wow. Well, if we had a good draw, our opponent had a great draw. This is a beating. Maybe next turn Chandra can take out a Risen Reef, but the damage has already been done. Wow, alright, well, sometimes you just gotta applaud the opponents. This is one of those spots. I 
And God appreciates getting wrecked every now and then. They haven't missed a beat. I'll take two. Alright, well, our uh, turn for Chandra is usually pretty good. In this spot, it's not looking amazing. Um, do I still kill this Risen Reef or do I play a Lavakin? Opponent's got basically all the mana in the world, five cards in hand. Probably still kill the Reef here. I'll keep the Smuggler back to protect Chandra. They probably have a Golos in there too, given all the different mana. Okay then. Well, pretty sure we're playing Limited over here. I guess, like, if I draw land, reduce plus Chandra, can kill Vorsclaw. Then we still need to deal with the Risen Reef. I'm getting all fired up. Not a smuggler. No answer for the Vorsclaw. Opponent's got 20 cards left. Milling them probably not gonna work out. We had such a good draw this game too, but uh, <laughs> pales in comparison to the opponent's. Don't really see a way out here. Take out the Risen Reef, play Brawler, say go. Hold on. I'm gonna try something new. Possible we should have just prayed that our opponent uh, didn't have anything in hand, not uh, try and cut off the value from Risen Reef and instead focus on our own game plan with like smuggler brawler being unblockable keeping our elementals to pump brawler but with all the cards our opponent sees and all the lands and mana they have available feels like uh, we don't really have a way out another force claw more healers I mean, to be honest, the healer of the Glade is what beat us here. And a portal to do it again. Alright, well... What can I say here? We're super dead. Can Shumblock a Vorsclaw and probably die the turn after. Like before the second Risen Reef, there was some hope that maybe they will run out of cards eventually and we can take over. But yeah, Blood for Bones. Get back Risen Reef. Third time's a charm. <laughs> and get back the Scorcher. I mean, decking them would probably be your most realistic win condition at this point. I don't think our opponent has played a non-elemental yet. So we should be forced to double chump Vorsclaw here. They're pretty safe to attack with the Risen Reef too if they wanted to. Also Portal plus uh, Scorcher plus Risen Reef. Basically draw three cards a turn. And a mountain. Alright, well, 
I think we're dead. Kind of curious to see if our opponent shows us more cards next turn. Convolute in there, alright. They had all scenarios covered. Alright, they do have some non-elementals in there. Howling Giant also plays quite well with a portal, making uh, wolf tokens every turn. Alright, well. I've definitely faced a couple of these pretty nutty elemental decks, but that was usually before the patch, when Risen Reef got past the third, fourth pick. But, uh, yeah. Don't often see these super synergistic elemental decks anymore. Well, I'm glad for our opponent. I'm uh, less glad for my rank. Alright, let's keep it up. Alright, hand seems pretty good. Spitter into Ember Cat or Mastiff. If we draw a Brawler, we can play turn 3. Opponent has a turn 1 play. Fairy Miscreant. Well, it's kind of annoying since it blocks a Spitter, but uh, we did draw the Lavakin Brawler, so we get to live the dream of a turn 3 Brawler here. Start by attacking. Let's play our Amber Cats. Opponent could be holding up an unsummon. There was a slight pause there. Sages Road Denizen. That's acceptable. Yeah, let's run out Brawler number one. Land would be good since then we get to Brawler plus Spitter next turn. Is there a point on the mill plan? So that's land and maniacal rage gone. And another miscreant, alright. Well. Gets to trigger Denizen again. Chandra and Scorcher gone, that's too bad. Alright. So if I were to attack with the Brawler, opponent can double block with Cloudkin and Denizen, but I guess we're fine with that. There's a chance they take it, in which case I want to play these elementals first. But there's a chance they respect, like, a trick more if I don't. I guess I'm fine playing the spitter first since I'm probably doing that anyway. And, uh... I would still keep up enough mana to represent the trick. But if they take six, I'm happy. Eh, yeah, opponent takes it, so... Maybe the plan of keeping up mana worked, maybe they're just on the mill plan and they don't care about taking six. If we draw land, we get to reduce. Another denizen, alright, so... They are on the mill plan. Two denizens now start adding up. So it's possible they had a miscreant earlier and they just saved it to play it after the denizen. Or they still have an unsummon, who knows. Well, if they're on the mill plan and these attacks don't really make a ton of sense. But maybe they want to try both here. Well, I'm just reducing one of the denizens so they can't uh, double block. And I think I'm fine attacking with everyone. So if they have the unsummon, they go to one. They probably wanted to cast that sooner. If they have double unsummon, I guess they're fine. Wow, okay. 
Well, that's a setback, to say the least. So I guess they are on the aggro plan after all. Maniacal Rage. Question is, am I better off going Maniacal Rage plus Mastiff, or am I better off replaying a Brawler, which is the only play I make this turn? If they have a third on summon, we're probably dead anyway. They would take six damage down to two, and then just uh, the spitters attacking would be lethal. So I think I like the rage. Even if they deal with a Mastiff, we're only scheduled to take six damage. And then just a spitter's turning sideways would be lethal. All right, they do have a second color after all. Attacks with all. All right, so now things get interesting. So the white mana gives him access to potential pump spells, plus two, plus two. And lifelink is the one that uh, comes to mind. They would deal four in the air, plus two would be six, plus they would gain four. So they would be at six life. I only have, I guess I have six on the way back. Hmm, this gets interesting. So I guess we could still beat plus two, plus two and lifelink. What we probably can beat is if we chump and they play the angel that gains for life. Right, I guess I'll chump. Not sure about this. All right, they did have plus two, plus two on lifelink. So we're down to one. And we have exactly six on the way back here. Wow. Exaxes at one life. Sweet, so we're four and one. Let's keep it up. Well, this hand's potentially very good if we draw a couple lands, but we do have three four drops, which is a lot. Uh, we are on the draw, so that's I guess makes it more reasonable. We have shock as interaction. So yeah, I think I'll keep this. On the play, I think I would mulligan. Looks like they might have a shock as well. Yeah, let's get in there. We did draw the lands for the brawler, so now this hand's looking pretty good. I'm happy shocking that. Want to see whether they attack first, since that kind of tells us a lot about the opponent's hand as well and their intentions. So getting that free nugget of information by letting them attack first is actually pretty valuable. Opponent does attack with the smuggler, so they felt comfortable kind of racing in that spot. Sadly, no play so far. But next turn, the brawler is going to be hitting pretty hard. Hopefully we don't draw any more lands, since don't really need more than four, maybe five for the one reduced ashes. Another smuggler. Also attacking. Alright, let's attack and play brawler. Alright, Smuggler's hanging back. So my play is probably going to be play second Brawler anyway, but on the off chance that her opponent has a pump spell, I want to attack first, even though that might miss out on one damage from one fewer elemental being in play. And I prefer playing Brawler over killing Smuggler, even though that would allow the Spitter to attack, which is more important to develop our board here. All right. Looks like they might have a trick. Nope. I guess this goes back to the shock that we suspected them to have earlier in the game. So if we wanted to play around shock, killing brawler, I guess um, killing the smuggler before attacking would have been the play. But still, we got a two for one here, so it's not too bad. And we get to replace the brawler with the second one. The Amber Cat doesn't tap for mana right away. It still has summoning sickness, so we couldn't go Amber Cat into brawler there. 
Alright, they have another shock for the spitter. Now we just get to unload. Opponent down to nine. Um, guess there's no great reason to hold land against red green. And this should be game. Well, that was quite a beating. Alright, 5 one let's keep it up. Alright, well, this hand's powerful. It's a little on the slow side, but Smuggler making Brawlers unblockable is pretty nifty. So yeah, I think I'll keep. Ideally, we draw into one of our two drops next turn. Amber Cat would be the best one. And then just need one more land, so between the 12 lands and the two Amber Cats, we kind of have like 14 good draws. Uh oh, do they have the Knight of the Abon Legion here? Or a skeleton? Uh, just a skeleton. Got the shock. In case it was Knight of Abon Legion, we had an answer. I'll take one. And we can attack with a hasty smuggler, land four lined up, so... Don't really need to draw more lands for the rest of the game here. Alright, Blood Burglar, and we drew the fourth Brawler, so I guess I'll just uh, hang back with the Brawler for now. Don't really want to trade Smuggler for Burglar, so that can stay back. And then next turn we can decide if we want to start attacking, if we want to shock, if we want to play another Brawler, depends whether we draw land or not. Burglar attacks. So here, Blade Brands. Could be an issue, Cutthroat, if we block with the Brawler. Don't want my opponent gaining two life a turn, but we do have a Shock to answer this Burglar pretty easily. Also, we have a Shock, which means that if we attack with a Brawler, let's say the trick they have is a Blade Brand, and they attempt to block with a Skeleton, then we can Shock the Skeleton in response to the Blade Brand, so I think I can just take it. Alright, Siphon, that's too bad. Alright, Brawler main phase, attack, and then keep up shock for next turn. Now if they attack with a Burglar, I think I'll block, and then we'll see whether or not they have the Blade Brand. If they do, we can shock. If not, I can still shock before damage, in case it's a Cutthroat. Opponent passes priority, I think I'm gonna shock then. Because that probably implies it's a cutthroat instead. Don't want to lose my brawler to it. Let's keep the train going. I will keep land in hand in case of fan lurker. Opponent says nice after the third brawler. Can't wait to play the fourth one. That's fine. Missing the green mana here. Oh boy, even the smuggler. And our opponent explodes. Level up. Alright, 6 and 1, time for the final boss. Alright, definitely got a keeper here, even have the Amber Cat to ramp out Chandra herself.
Let's play Amber Cats and get in there. Blue green. I think I'm liking the turn three brawler here. Hmm. All right. Now I'm not so sure anymore. Chandra killing champion might just be safer. If her opponent plays a ferocious pup next turn and grows us up to a 3 3, I'm gonna regret not killing it. So let's just do that right now. Chandra has a lot of abilities. I could minus to add mana, giving me five, six mana total when it comes to elementals. So I could go like Brawler plus Amber Cats. And then next turn set up a big attack with Chandra pumping elementals. Could just pump elementals now so the Spitter can attack past the Courser. Kind of like adding mana here though. And then play Amber Cats plus Brawler. And then no attacks for now. And then we've got maximum number of elementals in play to take advantage of the anthem effect next turn. Alright, there's a bow. Goes after Chandra. Kill Spitter. A double block makes sense. We lose Amber Cat, but we save Chandra, which seems important with two elementals in play. Alternatively, I could have just blocked a Courser with a Brawler and saved Amber Cat, so we have more Elementals in play for Chandra, but killing Courser seems worth it there. Alright, so now we can pump Elementals, attack, and play Mastiff, keeping up Shock. I think that's better than Berserker in this spot. This is a lot of damage. I guess if I still had an Amber Cat in play, I could have just killed my opponent with the Shock here. But we didn't know we were drawing the Shock. But we're pretty far ahead now. We kind of had to not draw. Yeah, let's pump the team. Ambusher, fair enough. They're still pretty dead though. GG's. Alright. Well, turns out our nut draw can even beat Ambusher. Sweet, so we got all the way to seven wins pretty swiftly. One loss against the nut draw from the elemental deck. I guess it was just a pretty insane deck that the opponent had. Uh, one game where I think I messed up, where I definitely should have played Chandra before playing the Score Spitter. Otherwise, I was pretty happy with my play. Lo definitely won some uh, pretty close games as well along the way. Sweet. Let's crack some packs. All right, that's going to do it for this draft. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.